Hi guys, welcome back and today I want to talk about something that is very important for newborn parents and that is sudden infant death syndrome. This is the leading cause for death for babies under 12 months old and the risk is highest when they are between 2 to 4 months old. So in this video, I'm going to share 5 things that you could do to reduce the risks significantly. So what is a sudden infant death syndrome? Well, this is a condition in which an otherwise a healthy baby dies for no apparent reason during their sleep and hence why it is sometimes referred to as crib death. So what can you do? Is there something that you could do to prevent it entirely? Unfortunately, there isn't one single method that would prevent it 100%. However, doctors do have recommendations that would significantly reduce the chances of it from happening. So the number one recommendation is to have the baby sleep on their back. There are some pushbacks from parents when it comes to having the baby sleep on their back because of certain concerns. The first concern is that the parents worry that the baby sleeping on their back for too long would cause a, a flat spot to develop on their head. And yes, this was a legitimate concern for my twins as well, but this can be remedied by having a lot of supervised tummy time when they are awake. And the second concern that most of the parents have when it comes to having the baby sleep on their back is that they worry that the spit ups, which is very common among babies on the first few months, may cause choking. The doctors say the choking is extremely rare and when the babies do have spit ups, they would either cough it out or just swallow it. I was also worried about this because our babies were spitting up as well. So what I did was I made sure that they're lying on their back but their head could be tilted at least to the side a little bit. If the spit up does happen, it will just kind of drain out from the side. If you want to find out more about the baby spit up, I actually have a video specifically on that topic. So check that out. The second thing that you could do is to make sure that the crib itself is clean of any loose items. That includes the blanket and yes, the crib bumpers as well. You could have the bumpers in the crib during the day, but when the baby is sleeping, you should make sure that everything is cleaned out and it is just the baby in the crib. And while we're on the subject of the crib, you want to make sure you use a mattress that is firm and not too soft because the baby sleeping on a soft surface could also increase the risk of SIDS as well. The third thing they could do to reduce the risk of SIDS is to make sure that the room temperature is not too hot. A lot of times the parents will keep the temperature high to make sure the baby is not too cold. And that was the case with me too. The babies only need about one more layer of clothing than you at the temperature that you find comfortable. So if you find yourself sweating, the room temperature is already too hot. In fact, the recommended room temperature by Health Canada website is 18 degrees Celsius, 64 degrees Fahrenheit. By the way, if you're finding value in this video, please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. The next thing that you could do to reduce the risk of SIDS is to make sure that nobody smokes around your baby. And that includes second and smoking because smoking would significantly increase the risk of SIDS. And the last thing that you could do is using pacifiers. The doctors are unsure as to why the pacifier use would reduce the chance of SIDS, but there is a strong enough evidence to recommend it. In fact, the American Academy of Pediatrics actually considers the pacifier use as a legitimate way of reducing the risk of SIDS. One thing to keep in mind though, that is that when the baby falls asleep with a pacifier and the pacifier falls out, do not try to put that pacifier back into the mouth because that in itself could be a choking hazard. The sheer thought of something as terrible as sudden infant death syndrome would make any parents anxious. And I hope with the information I shared today that I was able to elevate some of the concerns that you may have. So if you found any value in this video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more informations and tips in the future. I would love to share with you parents. So once again, thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.